So we all know that Procreate allows us to create some amazing illustrations. From stylized illustrations to realistic figures, we all know that we can use all of the tools available to create some fantastic illustrations. However, now for this video, the question is, can you actually use Procreate to create pixel art? Whenever you're creating assets, for example, for your own game, or you're creating emojis for your Twitch stream or your Super Chat, is it really possible to use Procreate to create pixel art? And even more importantly, can we actually create pixel art brushes that we can then use on Procreate to create some pixel art illustrations? You will find all of these answers in this video. My name is Leo and you watch a ghost paper, so now let's get to it. All right. Now that we're here on Procreate 5, let's start by creating a canvas that actually is more geared towards pixel art. And the reason is when we click on the plus here for creating a new canvas, we have all of these standard sizes from Procreate. And one of the most or, or the most standard size on Procreate is the screen size. The screen size on the iPad Pro is somewhere around 2732 pixels by uh, 2048 pixels, which is way more than what we need when creating pixel art. The secret about creating pixel art is actually working with very small canvases so that you have a pixel ratio or the pixel unit is quite visible on your screen. And then once you're done with your illustration, you can then scale that up to the sizes that you actually need, say for like a phone screen size or uh, an HD size or even websites. And there are ways to actually scale up these images without losing the quality of your pixel art. And all of these things we're gonna cover in this video. So don't worry, we're just gonna through, go through all of these steps necessary to create pixel art, and we're going to create here on Procreate. So first, uh, I'm going to choose one of the sizes that I've been currently testing with, and we're going to choose 256 pixels by 144 pixels. So. It looks quite big here on Procreate, but the, the, as a matter of fact, this canvas is quite small uh, if you were to export it and open on your computer, for example. Now, I'm just gonna choose a very dark color, probably black for the background. And the next step here is that we're gonna go into the Actions menu, uh, Preferences, and uh, actually, sorry, Canvas, and we're gonna turn on the Drawing Guides. And now we're gonna click on Edit Drawing Guides. And as you can see here, we have a drawing guide which has about 18 pixels for the grid size. Now, because we wanna do pixel art, I'm going to reduce this to all the way down to pretty much zero pixels or one pixel. And by clicking Done, now we have the unit of our, of our one pixel is here on the screen. So whenever I'm going to start drawing my pixel art, I'm gonna be able to see if that is actually the unit of one pixel or not. So we're also, just before that, I'm just gonna go into Edit Drawing Guide because I'm, I'm actually noticing how strong this is on the screen and it's probably not gonna be uh, really good to have um, a grid that is that visible. So I think that's probably a little bit better and I know maybe the resolution won't be that great, but I just wanna be able to show you how we can actually build and if we can actually build a pixel art brush here on Procreate. So now we're gonna go back into the full white because for this test, we're actually gonna be using white brushes just to see like on a black background if they really stand out and if they are pixel brushes. So the very first test that I wanna make, I wanna go into the, um, let's just say painting, no, um, probably airbrushing. We're gonna get the hard airbrush, we're gonna make a copy, and we're going to start editing this. But just before we edit, just like on this brush itself, if we reduce it to the minimum size, and we just try to draw, we have something that almost looks like a pixel brush. But here's the first problem. It's got a lot of aliasing, meaning that there's a lot of like secondary pixels, and they are faded, uh, they're not really uh, hard edge pixels, which uh, we actually need to create pixel art. So right from the get go, this brush is not really working to make pixel art. But now follow me as we edit this brush and the necessary steps to create a pixel brush. So I'm gonna go back into the brushes menu 
and we're going to click on our hard airbrush spacing I'm just gonna put down to none tapering we're going to turn it off turn off tip animation turn off the tapering at the at the end um, opacity leave it a max turn off classic tapering so that looks good in terms of shape because again we're talking about pixel art we probably don't want a circle but rather a square so we're going to click on edit and we're going to import and try to click on brush library and right here let's see if we actually have a square so we don't really have a square in the um, shape source but let's take a look on grain source so I believe we're oops I just got the wrong one definitely not this one so I'm just gonna choose blank and I'm gonna click done so now we have a little square here and it seems like there's still a little bit of a like an opacity thing happening we're gonna turn off randomized because we definitely want these squares to be uh, you know very parallel to uh, to each other so uh, let me just see another thing that we probably want to turn off is any kind of filtering so that option is actually quite hidden so you want to scroll all the way down on the shape and we're going to, going to turn off filtering so now let's keep going on grain source uh, we're gonna leave it as is we're gonna just turn off filtering as well now rendering it says intense blending so I believe we're probably gonna leave it on intense blending wet mix I'm just probably gonna turn this off for now there's no color dynamics really that we need to take a look here and now on dynamics still pretty good here we go so option Apple pencil and then flow we definitely want to turn off this all the way down to zero and this is really starting to uh, to create something really interesting for us uh, here on tilt I'm gonna leave it at 90 degrees no size compression finally on properties this is something where I also think is quite important so on the properties tab we actually want to have a pixel brush so what we're going to do here on maximum size we're gonna leave it at one at one percent and then on minimum size we're gonna leave it at one percent as well so this is starting to look like a pixel brush now maximum opacity minimum opacity I'm gonna leave minimum opacity to none and I'm gonna hit done so now when we zoom in on the canvas and I start painting I almost have a one pixel brush so what's happening here it's like it's trying to guess to guesstimate here uh, the best placement of this um, pixel onto the canvas but it's still creating almost like at times a three by three pixel brush so one more thing that we're going to do we're going to go into preferences and then we're going to go into edit pressure curve and now we're going to max this out and the reason for that is that I've also noticed that this actually generates the best um, look when we are playing with pixel brushes because it eliminates any kind of opacity or kind of a pressure once you're drawing uh, lines and dots on the screen so the so far it looks like it is possible to create pixel art but it seems like setting up the brush for one pixel art brush is not as easy as possible it's not as easy as it looks like so this is what I did guys for this video I've actually created already here on this tab I've created 12 different pixel art brushes and I went through the trouble of finding the right size for the shape so I've actually created these custom shapes and I've set up all of the necessary options so that we have our one pixel brush and there it is so you can create lines you can um, draw just by tapping on the screen so sometimes I actually tap a little stronger and it creates two pixels 
but this is definitely a one pixel brush. And you still get a little bit of opacity if you want to. Uh, it's maybe too, too low. So here you see there's a little bit of opacity and now you can create a little bit more, a little bit more opaque, so on and so forth until you get to 100% uh, opacity. And with that, you can create some really interesting shading on your illustrations and anything that you're creating. So continuing with the list, I've then made the two pixel brush, which is this one right here. Then I've made the six pixel brush. So it's something like this square. And then finally, there's the 12 pixel brush, which is really, really big. So this, these were like the basic brushes. And then I kept going and I've made some little stars that you can populate your illustrations. There is also the round brush of eight pixels. Some people, uh, you know, you may also want to uh, use pixel art by drawing circles or dots around the screen instead of having the square as your, as your measure, as your base measure. Then we have the 16 uh, pixel line or brush. And then I've also made this really, really cool kind of cloud brush. So you can do like smoke stacks, especially playing with opacity. So this brush, I highly recommend that you actually use with opacity so that you can get the best result. And then finally, I've created these really, really cool kind of glitch brushes. So this is one of the brushes. Then I have glitch two, which has way more pixels. And now just playing with opacity, you start creating some like really nice kind of shading and things like, you know, you can paint metal doors and you can paint the, paint the rust, the rusty kind of look on metal doors and on buildings that are made with pixel art. So now I'm just going to turn off the uh, drawing guide so we can see our canvas a little bit better. And finally, I've also done some uh, speckles brush. And that is once again, if you're painting some elements, so there's speckles one and two, which is a little bit um, more dense. And you can use that once again on walls, rocks, game elements that you're creating and a series of things. So now on the screen, here are a few examples that I've used this uh, brush pack to create a few illustrations. For example, you can create this really cool city. You can create this character by just using the brush pack. I've also created some animations. So here's a little cherry power up or like an, a game element. And uh, it is possible to do pixel art and animation in Procreate, which is really, really cool. And lastly, I've also, I'm just showing how we can do some shaded elements such as this rock. Uh, just by using some of the last brushes in this pack. Okay, now as the last thing that I wanna show you for this video is that say that you're actually done with your illustration in pixel art and now it's time to export it. And you probably want to export that illustration in a much higher resolution as again, you, you want to maybe post it on Dribbble, Instagram, you wanna post it on your phone, you wanna you know use this artwork, but at this moment, it is still a very small illustration. So let me show you how you can actually export it. So I've made a copy of this illustration here so I can keep copies. And we're first going to go into our illustration, make sure that it's all in one layer. We're gonna click on the layer and select copy. Now we're going to go outside of our illustration, click on a plus sign, and now we're going to create a new canvas. And this time I'm making a proportional size canvas, but at a much higher resolution. So right here we have a 1920 by 1080 P pixels uh, resolution for this canvas. So now I'm gonna click on the uh, actions menu and then add, I'm gonna hit paste. So now see that this is the size of our illustration that was done in pixel art. So now that we have our illustration here, in the modes, we're gonna go into uniform and in the interpolation methods here for scaling this, we're going to select nearest neighbor. And that is the mode that keeps the hard edges on your illustration. And that's going to keep your pixel art intact. So I'm just gonna, you know, we leave it on nearest, nearest neighbor. And I'm just going to move this to one of the corners of our canvas and keep scaling our illustration right here. I'm going to hit the arrow key. So, you know, as, as you have your illustration selected and when you scale up, 
it looks like it's going to blur blurry the pixels but once you exit exit this mode of scaling up you see that it actually has not uh, created any problems on your illustration so now finally I'm just going to create a new layer here because there's a bit of a white border I'm just going to use an eyedropper select our color and drag it onto the canvas so now we have our illustration and when I go back into the gallery you see that see that this illustration is at 1920 by 1080 pixels so this is the highest uh, you know the high pixel version of our illustration now we can go back into the actions menu hit the share button and share as any of the uh, you know image methods that you prefer so that does it for this video guys in conclusion it is possible to do pixel art in procreate and it is it is amazing to actually stay in procreate as you're able to use this brush pack if you want to to create your own illustrations so i'm going to be leaving this link in the description box of this video for you guys to check it out and see if this could be a helpful tool for you in your pixel art illustrations and in your workflow So that's it for this video guys, hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any tips and tricks, speed paint videos, reviews and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about Procreate 5 and how to create some really cool brushes, make sure to watch the video that is on the right side of the screen right here as it goes through on how to create some really cool neon brushes. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.